To escape the dangers of the office setting, you need to come up with a big idea. What do you do? How do you protect it? If you share it with your employees, how can you be assured they won't steal it and start their own company? What about the bank? What about potential investors or friends or your web developer? Ultimately, what steps do you need to take to protect your idea from the ruthless idea-stealing pirates of the brain? Never fear, help is here. Jeffrey Koss of Polinzi Shugart offers free legal advice in this week's installment of The Drawing Board. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Cass. I'm an attorney at Polsonelli Sugar. Polsonelli is a law firm with offices in 16 different cities, and I try to help startup companies get off the ground all across this great country. You've got this company with the idea. You want to tell your friends because those are the people you talk to most about things. And you might want to talk to your family, potential investors, and you might want to talk to a lawyer. Of course, you know I'd be in favor of that. You're going to be talking to all these people about your ideas. You only want to tell them what they need to know. Friends, you really don't want to share your trade secrets with your friends. If you're sharing your secrets with others, they're no longer secrets. Everybody's heard of NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. An agreement that says, hey, we're going to share some intellectual property with you. We're going to share some secrets of our company. But you're not allowed to tell anybody, not while you work here and not after you leave forever. The only problem you might deal with is if you, if you have a bigger company, let's say you're going to talk to IBM or something like that, and you want to share your idea with IBM because you think they'll want to buy it, and IBM signs a non-disclosure agreement. Now, I have no information that IBM wouldn't honor a non-disclosure agreement, but if they didn't want to honor one, they have a lot more money than a startup company, and they probably would win at the end of the day. I know Starbucks' policy is not to sign NDAs, and Starbucks will tell you if they take this idea, they're not going to steal it from you. They're going to use your idea and they're going to work with you. But they don't want to get into a situation where I take the idea to Starbucks and they say, come on, this is a great idea, but you're not the first person to think of this idea. And we've already considered this idea. We may or may not implement it someday, but we don't want to be tied down to an NDA that says, whoa, now we can't use it at all because we signed this agreement with you. So really, you're just going to have to vet out, so to speak, the people you work with. You don't want to just run off, a VC comes along, you're so excited, money, money, money. You're going to want to do research on the VC. You're going to talk to people who know the people in the VC. If you have these trade secrets, and you have, let's just say, an employee, this is the typical case, by the way. Employee knows about the trade secrets, and they go off to go to another company, and they start using the trade secrets in the other company. The best and most inexpensive line of defense, a letter from a lawyer oftentimes is scary enough to stop somebody that knows they're doing something wrong. Let them know that you have a lawyer who knows the area of trade secrets and intellectual property, and believe me, they're gonna look up your lawyer and see who it is, and it's not just uh, my cousin with the same last name. We need you to stop doing this. We want to compete with you fairly. We're not telling you you can't compete with us, but you can't compete with us using our trade secrets. And if you don't do it, you can file a lawsuit against them. 